Hi, Alex. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning, Bishop. Good to see you. You know, it is amazing to consider that the churches of the Virginia Conference have not worshipped in person for two months. When you think about worship the way it used to be, Alex, what do you miss the most? Well, I miss a lot of things about worship. I miss the uh, the, the chance to sing with other people, the, the opportunity to see other people. But, you know, it's the small things. It's those moments like I'm aware of when I'm in a group of people who are silent in prayer before God and, and just the feel and the, the sound of that room. I miss that. How about you, Bishop? What do you, what do you miss? You know, I tell you, I miss going out in the annual conference. I, I miss visiting the churches. I miss preaching. I miss when pastors ask me to participate in special services, you know, like confirmation. Well, you know, while we both miss in-person worship, we've been greatly impressed by the ways in which the pastors and congregations of the Virginia Annual Conference have adapted to this present day crisis and how they've developed such creative and innovative ways to continue to just support uh, uh, our vision, our vision to become lifelong learners who influence others to serve. I agree, Bishop. It's been really encouraging to see all the innovation that's been going on and the hard work. There are so many United Methodist churches in Virginia that have learned new ways to engage in mission by using tools like YouTube and Zoom and social media. Even we're rediscovering the telephone to do mission <laughs> in these yeah. unprecedented times. You know what, that is right. Greetings, people of the Virginia Conference. My name is Sharma Denise Lewis, and since 2016, I've been proud to be your bishop. And I'm Alex Joyner, an elder in the Virginia Conference and currently serving as the superintendent of the Eastern Shore District. Yes, as many of you know, at the end of April, I convened a team of district superintendents, local church pastors, a deacon, uh, working with the vulnerable population, and legal and medical experts from around the Virginia Conference. The purpose of this team was to create a process for returning to in-person worship in our conference in a way that is intentional, thoughtful, and most importantly, safe. Alex was the leader, as we call it on the cabinet. He was the convener of this work group. And Alex, again, I wanna say thank you for your work and leading this team. And then I want to thank the work group for meeting and, and working so diligently. Great on team of people. Page, you're welcome. <laughs> on the web page, www.vaumc.org forward slash return. You will find the fruit of the work group's labor in the form of three very important documents designed to work in concert with one another to help enable our congregations begin the process of returning to in-person worship. The documents are as follows. Number one, there's a handbook for local churches. Number two, a plan summary. And number three, a presentation document that can serve as a checklist for the vitally important things that must be done by all of us in order for our congregations to return successfully and safely to in-person worship. It is critically important to note that these three documents contain requirements, not guidelines. Requirements, not guidelines. And as such, they must be followed in great detail. Now, I know that some of you have already uh, been working on plans for moving back towards in-person worship, and I wanna applaud you on that. And it is my hope that the work that you've already done can supplement the documents you will find here. I also want to acknowledge that this approach, our approach, the Virginia Conference approach, represents a higher bar for returning to in-person worship than the current state of requirements. And because of that is because we want to love our neighbors by taking an abundance of caution as we return, as well as we just want to do this right because the most important thing to us is safety. 
like me, most of you have probably been waiting for the return to something that feels like normal worship. But this new normal, at least for a time, is going to be different. The virus forces us to rethink the way that we do everything in in-person worship. We have to respect the fact that gathering together has new risks, more risks than we face in shopping or encountering someone on the street. Moving into an enclosed space for worship is going to affect the way that we interact, what we have in our seating, how long we can meet, even our singing. So our return to in-person worship will not occur suddenly. Instead, you can expect an approach that is at once phased and cautious for the sake of the people in our churches and the communities that we serve. But I also want to say it's going to be a creative time. You know, our churches, we mentioned this already, our churches and church leaders have learned a whole lot in these last few weeks about doing worship in new ways. And we want to hold on to all the good things that have come from this strange period of change and keep doing those things that we need to keep doing. That creativity is going to continue as we ask every church to put together a healthy church team to prepare for the time when you can return to in-person worship. And we're also going to be relying on a small group of pioneer churches to take the lead as a learning community to help us all learn best practices. You know, as we met in this work group, we considered a variety of possibilities for returning to in-person worship. Yet even across the various professional disciplines represented in our conversations, we returned again and again to this necessity, as you've mentioned already, Bishop, of keeping people healthy and safe. Yes. To go back to one of John Wesley's simple rules, we believe that doing no harm in this moment means being extra careful about how we go back. And I want to emphasize that no church or church member should feel obligated to go back until they're ready. This phased approach enables us to start slowly so that we can all benefit from our connectional system to glean best practices and learning experiences from churches from a variety of congregational sizes, cultures, and contexts. The plans, as the bishop mentioned, are on the web page. Uh, let me just say a word about stage one. Stage one will begin with drive-in worship and in-person worship by the pioneer churches only, beginning May the 24th in most of the conference. Yes. Those pioneer churches will be meeting in groups of 25 or less, not including the pastor, worship leaders, and assistants, following the requirements laid out in the plan. And since Northern Virginia is going to remain under stricter conditions set by the Commonwealth for an additional period, stage one won't begin there until conditions allow. Yes, that's, that's right. Well, you know, Alex, clearly we are living in a historic time. One filled with uh, disruption, uncertainty, um, fear, and I would even also add anxiety. However, I want to tell you as your bishop that I remain convinced that the one in whom all things, not some things, all things are possible, has not abandoned nor forsaken us. And this same God has called as well as equipped us to be the church for the sake of the world that Christ died to save for such a time as this. I give glory to God for your courage, the hard work, and the persistence every Sunday. It is an honor to be your bishop in our shared ministry of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Again, I wanna say thank you, Virginia Annual Conference, for your work. I want to say thank you again, Alex, for convening the group. And I want to also say thank you again for the work group. Thank you, Bishop. And thank you, Virginia Conference, for all the support and for all your hard work. And we look forward to moving into this next stage in the journey together. God bless.